I was going to ask you how approachable was Vince. Was my next well, he was, he was approachable to us. I mean, he would listen to us. But I was never one of these guys, and Barry's not the same either. I was not the same. You know, call up the office and say, how you doing today, blah, 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 blah. Right. My ability in the ring was, yeah. was my resume. I didn't have to go and call and make up a story about you or you or you or drop hints because I felt secure in my ability. Right. I felt secure in our ability. That's not the case all the time. A lot of the guys are on the phone two, three, four times a day to make sure that their job is secure. Because I knew we had offers to go other places. I knew if we weren't here, you know, we're going to be somebody else. What was the road schedule like back then? Horrible. <laughs> oh, geez. You know, I, you know, and I could never figure it out why one day you're in New York and the next day you're in LA and then all of a hmm. sudden you're in New Jersey and then, you know, why not spend five, six days in New York, five, six days in LA or whatever. Like I was telling you before, sometimes you're on the road 45, 50 days, 60 days. But then they kind of got a little bit smarter at, at one time. They had us on the road for three weeks at, at a time. Well, that, and then that gave and then gave us ten days off one time. Yeah, but that came then, that came as a result of a lot of arguments right. in the locker room. Guys are getting burned out. You know, you're up at five o'clock catching six o'clock flight. They got you on the first flight so you can get to the town, and you do that for 40, 50, 60 days in a row. And your wife wants to know where you're at. And some guys have wives and girlfriends and two mm-hmm. girlfriends. You know, and something breaks down and this and that and this and that. Little things plus your aches and pains and you have to go to the gym. There was a bunch of scuffles, verbal arguments, and physical arguments. And I think that it, it got back to the office where we got to change this. You can't run these horses all the time like that. And then later on, I, I think I was gone at the time. They'd work two weeks and off a week, two weeks. That's a great schedule. When we were in smaller territories like Charlotte, you still travel. But you're home every night. You know, you can still kiss your wife and hug the kids. And, and then you you might be going the next morning. But right. Your wife knows where you're at. It was like a regular job. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. Memories of uh, the WrestleMania match with uh, Tenaru and Kataya. What are your memories of that match? I think that was you, right? That wasn't me. That was you. Tenaru? Yeah. Was, was that in California? I believe so. They only came in for, like, TV and maybe one of the pay-per-views. Yeah. And they yeah, it was me and you. <laughs> no. Yeah, Donald Trump was there. Uh, no, no, not in California. In California? That was you. Must have been you and Brian. That was after I left. I can't remember. Okay. I can't remember. It's not a standout match. Okay. Was, was it in Japan or was it? It here? was no. I think it was here because it was at Mania. That's that was at WrestleMania after I left. I left in. Uh, it was kind of a blur after, after Survivor Series. After you left, that was kind of a blur. I think <laughs> you know. Whose idea was it to uh, dismantle the gimmick? Well, Vince's. Yeah. The office. Yeah, the yeah. office. Um, now I don't want to start trouble here or anything like that, but when we did an interview with Bill, you, you had bluntly in your shoots interview talked about kind of feeling a little bit betrayed by Barry. And uh, obviously you guys put it against, put behind your personal differences. What exactly happened to cause the heat between you guys? Well, I don't know if it was actually betrayed. It was a situation where... Uh, I have to go back and think. When I stayed and I was the repo man at that time? Or? No. Remember the one match we were supposed to we were supposed to have a match or something and you had gone home? And uh, uh, I stayed home? You stayed home and uh, Brian and I had to do it. Uh, something. And what was proposed, Barry probably didn't even know anything about there was a real screwy finish proposed. And we were led to believe that Barry was instrumental. I'm sure now, as I look on past and got past that, he probably had no idea. Because Vince and some of the people like to stir up things. Right. Uh, and we had an opportunity, and I had proposed it to Barry, we had an opportunity to go to uh, back to Atlanta at that time. See, that's why I stayed home at that time. Because yeah, we'll we were going to go to Atlanta, I quit. Well, see, I was we, done. We weren't told that. And uh, we were we were told something else. Right. And uh, even I, even Brian was shocked at the time. So we, I think we were left out. We, we thought we were left out to dry. But everything came through 
fruition when we went through the lawsuit and stuff like this, things were cleared up. Uh, it wasn't so much from the office itself, it was from people that were agents who were leading, trying to start up. Start up. Start up. Right. See, because I don't know exactly what happened at the time, <coughs> but we were talking about leaving and we went on the road and we weren't going to come to the next town. Well, they, we, we, were, we were coming back to work and I stayed home. And I can remember uh, it was during hunt, duck hunting season and I was out in my backyard duck hunting. And it was about two days after we were supposed to be back. And I remember the phone rang two, three times. It was Vince calling the house. And finally I answered and uh, Vince says, Darcy, where the hell are you? And I says, I'm out hunting. And I said, screw this job, screw everything. And I said, I just don't want to talk to anybody. Hung up. And then that was the end of that. And then about a week later, Vince called me up. And he says, well, come on in. I want to talk to you. What made you quit? And I can't really remember all the details. Well, they were they were wanted to, put, mask. They wanted to put cloth masks on us. Yeah, they were putting masks. They called us into the office, and the, and the, and the road warriors were sitting there. This was after a series of matches and we're up in the office probably two or three o'clock in the morning right Vince yeah. his lemo we're at stanford and they were going to do this and that so i had contacted Oli and, and unbeknownst to vince and we were going to go into atlanta right well i remember what it was now so we go to the next we're, we're going to have the next couple series of matches and then in the inner period getting ready to make our leave we're going to go to japan and we got word that uh, Barry had gone up to the office and agreed to leave the team and have another gimmick. And then there's Brian and I, we, and we couldn't communicate. Right. Did you guys so, try to call each other or no? I don't I, remember. I, can't remember I, what I, the deal I don't was. remember what it was. If we were, I know that Brian and I were upset at the time. Right. It, it was approached. It was presented to us that he had gone up and. and made his own agreement and was going to do this. Well, because we, we already agreed that the demolition, that was the yeah. end of it. And yeah. I said, screw it, I'm done. I ain't going to, you know, when I say I'm going to go, I'm gone. I'm, I'm quitting. That's what I did in Charlotte, North Carolina. I, I you know, got screwed up, on, screwed up on a payoff, you know. They didn't give me what I wanted to do. Jimmy Crockett said, you know, the wrong thing to me. I said, well, I'm done then, you know. I mean, I was always confident enough. I could, confident enough that I could get another job and make my own way. Mm -hmm. Right. So you know, that was the end of it. Who reached out to who? How did you guys bury the hatchet? Well, I didn't know there was a hatchet to be buried. No. Really, you know, because uh, you know, I've never ever said nothing bad about Bill ever. I never could. Um, you know, we just had our own separate ways here for a long time. Yeah. You know, dur during the, uh, the legal situation. Uh, I think we had some some uh, communications and stuff like that. And I understood Barry's deal because he was still working at the time. Uh, and then he was in WCW. As far as, you know, from the time we separated till the time we had that uh, reunion in Windsor, uh, we had a number of people that tried to uh, communicate back and forth there. You know, his schedule in my school, I was teaching at the time and doing independent stuff. And it just never, never developed. Never. See, yeah, and, and I never, I had people call me and I just told everybody, I don't want nothing to do with wrestling. I mean, I got my own company going and I'm busy as heck. So it was, it was hard. You know, I wasn't even thinking about wrestling anymore. 